pretty darn full. And I'm breaking frames. What's this bee gonna do then? Might do they? Oh, they just grabbed it. Okay, so they're queenless. Oh, come on now. Yes. Sting me on the calf. All right, get suited up. Give you a close up look here. So clearly, they've packed away some more honey there. You can also see open comb on the outside edge there but I think we're talking about at least like that frame clearly is full I think it's full at least on the top sometimes they trick me and they cap just the the top inch or two and so when I'm looking down I see what I think is fully capped and and it's actually not it's just capped on the very top. Like that, you can see, <laughs> like truly capped just on the very top. But there, I mean, that's full of honey. There's plenty of honey there. So, so these inside, let's get to these inside ones where I thought that they were probably fully capped. Pretty darn close. Well, pretty darn close on that side. But that's a decent, decent frame of honey there. Yeah, um, and then just partially drawn out, this one is very full it's a good frame looks really good all right so you know based on that I could steal another frame or two of honey from these guys but it doesn't seem like it's worth it you saw my videos from this spring, I mean early spring, my bees were running out of food. Um, I, well, I had done a couple of things. I had taken too much honey and then not fed them enough. And they, they were starving, they were starving. So I got lucky. It got, we got some really warm weather in like January. And I was able to feed them a little bit and get them through. I still had at least one hive die, clearly from starvation. And so, and that sucks, you know? I mean, you don't want to do that. So I may just pull the super off or the uh, queen excluder off here and let them have these. We'll have to see how full they really are. And once again, I've got to Yeah, I've got a frame there that pulled apart. So if you don't glue your frames together, I just nailed these together and I don't know when I put these together, but I, I thought just the nail was going to be enough and I thought because they do kind of prop you know they propolize around I thought that was going to hold them enough there's just and it's not true there's just too much tension 
when you're prying on them, if they just sat in there, they'd be fine. But they don't because I keep prying on them. And so I've had many frames do this to me and now it's a mess because now to get this uh, fixed, I either need to bring glue with me, which probably wouldn't be a problem if I just glued as I, as I had problems, that, that would be one way to deal with it. Otherwise, you know, extract this, figure out what to do, and then repair them. I've got a number of frames like this, and I'm sure I'm gonna find more, maybe not specifically today, but, but it just becomes this mess, and it really, it didn't save me any time. Not, not gluing those frames doesn't save me a, any time, you know? I mean, two to three seconds per frame as you're putting them together, maybe? Just squirt some glue on there, seal it up and call it good. And I would have been way better off, but now I've got frames that are falling apart on me. They're just literally coming apart like that. And it's a mess. That stuck down good. All right. So this is all going to be the brood chamber. It is still a super. You can see that it's a medium. So it's only got nine frames in it. Two, four, six, eight, nine. It does. Let's make sure I'm telling you the truth here. Um, and so the frames are drawn out fatter. You can see in there. Really well built up. I'll get in there and see. I see a lot of honey on the outside. That's great, but I'm hoping we'll see brood in here. Talked about this a lot, but I just have to keep talking about it. How I need to be intentional when I do a hive inspection, and that is, it's typically honey on the out, at least on the very outside, and you know, often maybe even two frames. So the queen's probably not going to be out there. So that typically is your best frame to pull out with the confidence that you're likely not going to have an issue squishing a queen. You might squish a bee or two. You're trying not to roll them. You're trying not to squish them. But when, especially when they draw this stuff out so thick, you know, I'm going to scrape this honey, probably, this capped honey. Likely, there you go. I did some damage there. Because it was, they had a chunk of comb sticking out here that, that raked that. But, at least I'm pretty confident that the queen wouldn't have been here, so I didn't injure the queen in doing that. Right, I damaged some honey comb. No big deal. And now I can slide these over. Now this is relatively new. You can see, oh, you can already see there's brood wonky comb with, with drone brood on it. I probably want to clean that out. I don't know. This. Do you have that issue with foundation being drawn out wonky? I have that issue a lot. I know that people talk about tricks where you can, yeah, because I've got lots in here now. This is just, it's just kind of a mess. And then what do you do? Go back through, scrape all that off. I mean, that's all drone. That's all drone brood. And it's, uh, it's a mess, but we're trying to get it get them to draw this out evenly and correctly, I mean, I probably need to really clean that up is the reality. And this, I guess that's the other problem that I have caused for myself is that I used the super, so I used the medium, and I left nine frames in there. So instead of the tightly packed 10 frames where they're gonna draw it out, they're not gonna have quite this issue 
that you know all of that is you know and it's just kind of wasted not that drone brood aren't uh, beneficial they obviously are but you don't want just thousands and thousands and thousands of drones in your in your hive so I should probably clean that out scrape that off so this one is better again it's still wonky you still got drone comb there honey here but it's just kind of partially drawn out and then not really drawn out and it's just kind of a mess that side's a lot better but that still is all all drone I can't see what we got going on in there looks like to me looks like potentially a lot of that is has been has emerged see just a little bit of a ragged edge on some of that you know you can see a couple that are workers worker size right there and there but around that it looks like potentially that's been and then just if we get in the right light and I don't know there is that's been backfilled with brood so there's brood in here there's young there's larva in there so that's awesome so that's good that's what we want that's perfect the frame is not awesome but the frame is not terrible I'll probably chip away this side a little bit There is a mess. Chip away on this too. Yeah, that side's all right. There we go, that's more what we're looking for. Really nice brood. Well, I've got a couple of, so I've got to start paying attention to what we got going on here. I think this is hygienic behavior. And if you can see here, there, Chipping away at that one too. As far as uncapping this and checking on those right there as well. You see that? I think that's hygienic behavior. Some of these things can be confused with each other. Bald brood, you know, having an issue like bald brood. versus hygienic behavior. Just a handful. Just a handful uncapped on that side. This all looks okay on this side. But again, a situation like that, you're starting to think about disease. If there's a disease here, or if that's just hygienic, hygienic behavior. I mean, when I say disease, I mean other, other disease besides mites, because we know that they have some level of mites in here. Really nice, that's all brewed. Again, uncapping there see all that I don't know I guess maybe it maybe it would been uncapping on that side maybe this hive would benefit from a, a mite wash I can see the pads down in there I can see the mite away quick strips that are still in here Yeah, I've got eggs in here, so that looks good. Drone brood on this side. Looks like the drone brood is being treated the same way, almost like they're uncapping it there. I'm 
that's a brood. Really interesting. Woo. Yeah, I mean, they're... So I think they're uncapping them. I can see mites. There's a mite. Oh, man. There was a mite right there. There is a mite on that. I thought that was the eye, but I'll try and hold this frame so you can see it. I hope you can see it really clearly. There's a mite right, right there. On that. So this must, I, I'm guessing that is hygienic behavior. Then they're trying to clear out. It's cool to see in one sense, it's scary to see because how bad, how bad are they? How bad are the mites in here? But you can totally see What's this bee going to do then? Might, do they? Oh, they just grabbed it. Holy cow. That was cool. Did you see that? Did it bite it? Oh, that would be freaking awesome. That bee absolutely just attacked that mite that... That was right there. <laughs> That's so awesome. That's really cool to see. Well, that really, yeah, I guess it makes me wonder what, because I see the uncapping and it's a little scary, like they're having an issue, a d disease issue. It also seems like it's um, hygienic behavior and then you see that where they literally just I don't know what it did to that is it still playing with that mite? I think not 100% certain but this bee right here I think is still maybe messing with the mite that it got I can't really tell. I'm just going to watch it for a second and see. But it absolutely went after that. Well, I looked away for a second to see if I could see any more mites on that drone brood that... Holy cow. That was really cool. So I looked away, I, don't, I lost the bee that I thought had that mite, but... So I think this is hygienic behavior. Really interested to see what they'll test. If this is what they're doing. Because that's pretty freaking cool. If that's what I just witnessed, which I don't know what else it would have been. God, I hope I got that on camera. The other day I was out here, I was able to see a mite walking around. And it was in one of these two colonies, I think. Well, anyway, that was cool, like... <laughs> that was cool. Worth the trip out here, worth, worth breaking a frame. Worth finding out that I got a wonky comb that I got to clean up that's kind of a mess. That was awesome.
and this is just packed with honey so that's freaking cool too look at that beautiful yeah um, I just I'm slowly starting to be a little bit less selfish and I want to get honey because that's fun but I'm not going to take it all from them you know I even up to last year I probably would have pulled these frames out and you know taken this this full frame of honey here and then fed them sugar water and hoped and again I, I had an issue last year that I got very lucky I could have lost a lot more hives than I did so and that issue was they were starving they I didn't give them enough food I didn't take the time I took too much honey I didn't take the time to feed them enough and I probably could have remedied the the selfishness of taking that honey taking the extra honey by really supplemental feeding but I didn't get out here enough to to do that and so the buckets were empty and so so now I'm gonna leave them this honey I think and let them be but I gotta clean this off so this I gotta at some point get the frames even and with this wonky car it just doesn't doesn't work oh did I see some more mites yeah there you go drone column there's mites right there two of them yeah I'm interested to test this hive and see what they what they test that with a mite wash I already treated them, I already treated the whole apiary once with one round of two strip of Mite Away quick strips. So get that cleared up a little bit better. Definitely want to save that if I can. It's all good wax. <laughs> Who needs an alcohol wash? Just check the drone. Just check the drone comb and holy cow they're all they're all full of mites I mean a lot a lot a lot well I'll let them clean those out oh I gotta get this off too just such a mess And what they do is, on the outside you see this whole piece here, but what they actually do is like build a little bridge here, you know, a connector here, a connector here, and a connector here. So what's actually touching the foundation is only a strip here, here, and maybe here, because they really don't like that. Really don't like that foundation, even though it's, when it's sold to you, it says that it's been dipped I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Maybe if it's smeared with honey, though, do a better job of drawing it out. All right, so I got that cleaned off. I think I will do a mite wash from this high. So I'm, I have might away quick strips down in here from the last treatment so the frame maybe back in there in a second but I think I should I think I really need to do a mite wash on this one I'm, I'm really interested really interested to see what we got here I'm not worried about the queen going anywhere as far as above or below the 
queen excluder because that excluder will come with me today. There we go. There you can see the old strips. Get those off. And since I'm down in here, so when I first started using these, I thought they said that the mites or the, the bees would remove this, would chew it apart and remove it. That is definitely not the case. I have, I have found strips that I have forgotten in hives from the previous year in the spring, you know, and they look like this. So they definitely don't, they, I'm sure they were trying to remove some of it, but this, this is pretty, I mean, this is like beef jerky now. It's like pretty, pretty hard. And they say you can compost them. So I feel like if I just throw them over there, they probably will degrade just fine. All right, I might as well dig in here a little bit too, just because I'm curious. Now, that's the, the, the <laughs> this is the problem with beekeeping is that, um, well, God, I don't know, maybe this is my chance to, uh, when they say you're not supposed to move hives more than three feet or something too, because your bees are gonna get all screwed up. Because this is where they live, right here on the edge of this, in relation to this tree and all that kind of stuff. I guess if I just move them for the time being, I think I'm gonna try and move them if I can pick this up. It's not too heavy, so I'm gonna move it from here over to there and see if I can do something with this hive stand because this is a mess. Yeah, they'll be confused for a while. But, uh, they're come, I mean, we're coming back. Uh, I hope. Oh, God. See a lot of drone brood there. Oh, if I just slide this over. Will that be enough for me to do some sort of intervention here? Okay, I moved that over. Now let's see what I got. Everybody wants the honey, so. I mean, it's just sinking into the mud here. I know it is. I move this back. Oh, this is quite an undertaking here now, but it, it does have to happen, so we'll just do it. It's all part of the deal. When you're doing this, there's all sorts of problem solving that you have to do when you're dealing with dealing with this stuff. So I think I'll just have to take this hive apart. I can't move it all at once. I don't think. Oh. There's probably, I probably put a stick or something under here sometime. Yeah, that's likely what's under there now. Is, uh... <sighs> then your woodenware starts to come apart. And then your smoker. Only stays partially lit.
Ooh. All right, so we have some some capped honey up top here. Pretty darn heavy. Oh, oh darn, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Let's see how capped this is. Come on. I mean, pretty full. The one next to it's almost all capped. So this, I mean, this super is really good. Really darn full. So we'll see. I've got quite a bit of space here for these guys. So that super may, may be able to come with me. It's pretty cool here. They decided to make their own, their own frame here. They decided that there was too much space there that they could sneak in another spot. Cause I, I guess I got these frames a little bit too close. But that looks like that's mostly honey in there. Jesus. Let's see what I'm dealing with here. Yeah, I mean, it's sliding off as we talk here, so as I'm messing with it. One frame stuck. At least one frame stuck. Good God. Okay. Oh, and a quick strip. Probably also stuck. Now, can I slide this over? I think I can slide this over. <laughs> Got this stick under here that's supposed to help keep it. Now it's just rolling around. All right. Lift with your back, Steve, not your legs. Uh, wait a minute. So this one is pretty darn capped. I've got two over there already. Oh. All right. Now, what the heck am I gonna do with this? I didn't really think I was dealing with this today, but I absolutely have to. I just have to. It's such a mess. Oh, look at that. Squirrel, squirrel nest. Look at all the nuts in there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that's partially why this was... Well, maybe I'll build it over here now. That shouldn't be too far for them, right? Let's try and level that dirt. I don't have a shovel or anything, so... Level that ground a little bit. Down and dirty. Seems way better. For now. <laughs> For now. Huh. All right, all right. So, I moved that back a little bit, dug those cinder blocks out of the dirt. Look what I found underneath them. Looks like a squirrel had been tucking rations underneath the bricks. So 
Talk about coexisting, huh? Coexisting right there with the with the bees. Yeah, and I'm out of breath. I just tried to just had to pull those out and then dig this flat a little bit. All right, I'll move this guy off back. Mm, there went my hive tool. Come on now. Did I do the whole thing last time? Oh, I guess so. You gotta be a hero, don't you, Steve? Lift with your back, not your legs. Yeah. Okay. That's at least better for now. All right. Um, get in here quick. So I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna pull that top super and maybe take it with me. I'll shake them out. But there you go. Beautiful capped honey here. Jesus, this whole. Whole thing. Well, maybe that's a sign. Maybe that's why they built that comb on the side there, because they needed more, and they thought they needed more room. I can certainly, I have more supers. I can certainly throw one on top here and see if they need it. Oh, mama! Yes, yes, come on now, that is so awesome. Every time I see it, that's awesome. You can see hygienic behavior there too. Uncapping those cells. And then it kind of looks like these are being recapped. Right here, potentially. Oh yeah, that is really nice. Wow, look at that. So cool. Just so much fun to see a nice frame like this. You know, honey rimmed, slab of brood in the middle versus that wonky stuff that I had on the other. And, and I've had Good luck and bad luck with buying used equipment. This, this frame, I'm very confident, is from a commercial beekeeper in the area where I live. It's a more solid frame, thicker wood. Um, it just seems built a little bit better than some of the frames that I have that I've purchased myself when I made the choice. So I bought, and this, I know that this super for sure is one of those supers. So not that the frames always stay together, but with the super that they came in, but. Well, that's great. I, yeah, um, we're good. I may need to give them some more space. I will work on that, or maybe I'll just go grab one. I don't think it's gonna hurt at this time to give them another box if they need to fill it up, they can. If they don't fill it up, I can always squeeze them back down in the fall. We're only mid-August, so 
we got some time. Yeah, so I'm just gonna give them more room here. They can do their thing. Yeah, that is truly just for them. God, they're still a little wobbly, but way more stable. Let's make this base as wide as I can, I guess. All right, so there's that. And we'll just cap them up. Um, God darn it. I do, I should test. Here's what I need to do. I'm gonna test this hive here. These clearly are hygienic, which is really, really cool. Um, first of all, I guess I'll move them back over here. So I'm gonna move, move this hive back. to its new location. I don't, I don't think that location should be too confusing for them. It's only back about two feet, but their entrance is in the same direction and everything. So I don't think uh, we gotta give them some credit, right? For being kinda smart that they'll figure it out. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I know, guys are mad. Uh, lift with your back. Oh, not your legs. Oh. Uh. There we go. I think I had a lot of bees that are confused and lost here. I think they're going to find their home here real quick. All right, we will come back. Do a mite wash. Get into this, see what the main brood chamber has to offer and do a mite wash on these guys. I'm really, really curious. Really curious to see what the brood situation, I can see, I'll show you. You see the bump sticking out here, all along there, that's drone brood because they are bigger and so the cells are bigger. So that's guaranteed drone brood right there. Um, you can see that's honey poking out there. So, got some stuff going on. Let's just see what That time of the month. Packed, packed, packed with honey. Um, honey and kept honey and uh, open nectar there. The way it, the light is here, I can't really tell how much smoke I'm getting. I can smell that there's smoke. But then when I go and look at my video, I'm like, wow, I really smoked the crap out of them. Drone. A little drone brood at the very bottom of this one. A little larva, a little cap brood. Pretty interesting. So, ah, uh, yeah, there's a little bit. Mostly resources, see all that? Bee bread. There's a little bit of brood, just spotty spots of brood in there, but it's just so full of resources. Uh, look at this. Look at this mess. Another mess frame. Thank you, Foundation, that Steve didn't treat with more wax. So. That's all drone, capped and uncapped. And <laughs> yeah, 
some kept, but it looks like looks like they backfilled that so much that she, you know, really doesn't have much place to lay, which is fine. She's got these upper boxes that are all full and doing great, but there we go, that's better. Open, capped. Well, this looks like good a frame as any for me to maybe test. We'll try it. All right, so. Fill it full enough so I know it's going to cover the bees when they're in there. I don't know if I have enough for a second test. Probably don't, but we'll save it anyway. Oh, look at that. Well, be careful when you wash out your... Can you see that? I mean, this deserves a pause here. So I guess I didn't, when I swirled it and washed the last test out, I had two, I had two mites in there yet. I haven't done a test today. So, it's gonna change my results. You know, if we're looking at five or three, that's different, so. So now I know I have two mites in here. So zero is two, right? Again, this is the hive I haven't even been in this other hive because I was moving stuff around. This is the hive that had that mite, what I thought was a mite biter. That's what I saw. Oh, we got some issues. I mean, there's like clearly an issue. See this? I think that's the formed wing virus. Okay, that means parasitic mite syndrome. I'm not sure that, yeah, I think it's, I think it is. And I just, treat, I did, I just treated this colony. I treated them all with Formic from Mite Away Quick Strips. So, I don't know, that uncapping I think would be good, but at the same time, I don't know. If we got an issue and I just, I didn't, didn't get it, I may have to be more aggressive with the treatment of this, so I gotta make sure I got, the queen is not here. Double, triple, quadruple check. Do not see the queen. Four years into beekeeping, I'm finally pretty confident I can't always find her, but I have gotten to a point where I'm pretty confident, like I don't, nope, she's definitely not on this frame. But sometimes they pile, you know, they pile around her, they pile on top of her. All right, we're gonna do it. Notice how I'm going downwards. It seems maybe counterintuitive to what you would wanna do, I think. Double, triple check here. Wow, this one is huge wingspan. No, I didn't get enough, so that was just a real waste. I didn't get enough from that side. I didn't feel like it was a good enough sample. So now most of them flew out, right? And so that was just kind of a waste. But now I gotta check this other side. 
think I got plenty of bees here as long as I don't have the queen. So, you gotta take your, you know, take your time with some of this stuff. This is pretty critical if you, if you wash the queen, you're really, you know, you're really screwed up. That's all right. There, now get them in the alcohol. Get the cover on. I might, still might not have that, that great a sample there, but we'll see. Can always shake a few more in. Make sure they're all dead. Now I got a bee on the, kind of becomes a mess if you get bees inside here. It just doesn't look good and you can't see. And so just making sure that these all got washed so they're all dead. Okay, so they're all dead. It'd be nice to get that bee out of there. Holy Hannah, I have got a huge problem here. This is crazy. Well, no wonder I see my... God darn. Well, the Might Away Quick Strips clearly didn't do it. Or my timing was wrong, you know, I... Uh... Well, anyway, you can hear that I'm frustrated, and you'll see why in just a second. Holy Hannah, what a mess. Oh. So you can, oh. <laughs> I've been messing with these two hives all morning, just moving them uh, and uh, getting that stable there. And man, that end hive that I just tested with this is the strongest hive that, I mean, that I've had. I pulled a bunch of frames from them. It's crazy to look back and think back this beekeeping season, all the things that I did. <sighs> I pulled a bunch of frames out of there to try and write a laying worker hive. I created a split that I created too early and it got too, you know, it was too small and it got cold and they all died. I created that basically from that hive, the two, those two hives that I just moved and messed with. <laughs> it's so, it's so strong. Um, or it has been so strong and now I feel like I failed, like I don't know, I know I should have, like last year, I bet I treated, I may have even treated in June or something. I should, I should look back when I, I didn't get my first treat, I mean I, I treated July 24th, I think was when I treated these guys for the first time and I was concerned it was too late, like I just didn't get to it. But the mite washes that I got were, they were after treatment. 
and I don't know if I just, a different section of the hive, I treated the, the mediums that I have that are brood chambers up top. I did treat from there. I didn't go all the way down into what would be like the main, the core nest, I guess. I just treated now, or I just tested now from the main brood box, the big brood box. And all I did was put the bees in the alcohol and I got a couple bees in between the strainer and the, the outside plastic. And so I just swished it around enough just to kill the bees before I even did a shake so that I could take the strainer out and dig those bees out because it's just such a mess you can't I hate showing and looking if I've got bees floating around in the bottom there and I just did this little swirl to kill the bees so that I could take the strainer out so I could get the two bees out that had gotten in between and I have so many mites I mean, it's, it's incredible, like, it's frustrating, but it's also incredible, like, what did I, what did I miss? Why were they three mites 18 days ago, you know, 3% 18 days ago? And again, every time I look at this, it looks, ba it, uh, it looks bad, like, the number of mites in a sample looks terrible, because it's like, there's mites everywhere. It really feels that way every time I test. And then you count them and then you do the equation and it's like, oh, well, based on the numbers that people talk about, you know, two or three percent, three percent being like a threshold where you should treat for something, all of a sudden, you know, you've got nine, nine mites. It's not it's not as big a deal, but holy cow, this just, this is a problem. And now I really want to, so I'm going to throw Formic back on. It was 18, I think they say 20 days. I'll have to research what they say. It's the only treatment I have with me. It's what I got to, I think it's what I got to do. They suggest, you know, um, Nod, N-O-D, Nature's Own Design is the is the company that makes Mitoway Quick Strips and Formic Pro, and they do tell you not to treat again within a certain time frame. But oh my God! see that I keep trying to move so that they're directly in the light oh, that's better maybe all right so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty 21. There's some other debris in there that I see. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, did it get worse? Probably. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23. Oh, I should stop shaking. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but... Oh, man. 
23. Uh, okay, so let's learn from this. Okay, I just have to think back to my research, the YouTube videos that I've watched, the people that I've talked to. If I didn't have this with me today to test and I had just treated 18 days ago, I would think I was probably pretty good, especially with the formic acid in the Mitoway Quick Strips. Um, it treats, it's a little harsh, people think, some people think, but at the same time, it's supposed to kill mites under the cappings, it's supposed to kill mites everywhere. So I would have thought, I would have been fairly confident that, hey, you know, I need to test again, but um, I'm probably okay. But then as you get to know what you're looking for, the uncappings, now is that an additional disease? It could be, you know, um, bald brood, um, or it could be just so infested that they are, that maybe they're not necessarily that hygienic, but they're so infested that they are becoming hygienic. But then I saw that one bee that had deform, um, deformed wing virus, and I even saw, you know, I got to see a mite that a bee went after, like literally went after the mite. And I thought that was cool, that showed a hygienic behavior, but if they're hygienic and they've got 23 mites in them, well, I, you know, on the spot, what's 23, mi what's 23 mites? in a 300 B sample. Yeah, yeah, my face doesn't work because, so 23 divided by 300, right? So that's all of a sudden, I went from what I thought was about a 3%, maybe just over 3%, and that was right after a treatment. I was in the middle of a treatment. I just went from 3% or just over to 7.6% infestation here. Now, is that, again, when you see that many mites, it's terrible, like it's it, uh, frustrating. It makes me mad. But 7%, yeah, it's high. And obviously, there's issues here. But... That, I think that's still something that we can recover from. Get these frames back in, get those strips on. We're gonna treat, we gotta treat. Treat again, I'm gonna treat with what I got. Maybe I'll come back with oxalic acid in the fall. But two, four, six, eight, nine, I still gotta sneak this other frame in here. So, that's what I gotta do. I gotta treat, I'm gonna treat with the same stuff I did. Before Does this thing stay lit after all my I don't know that it did. The the other issue that I'm running into with this cotton stuff is that it seems to it seems to stay lit, but it also burns fairly fast. So like the the amount that I put in before burned up. When it went out, I went and checked. It went, it did go out, if you didn't know that. It, it did go out, and when I went and checked, it was out of fuel. It had burned through everything, so it stay, stayed lit until, until um, the fuel burned out, so. All right, I gotta get this frame in. We're gonna get my way quick strips on here, and I gotta get, <laughs> I gotta get moving. All right, we are gonna treat them. Let's do it. If I'm treating one hive, I'm treating them all. God, these are gooey. I wonder, I also read, I think I was supposed to keep this stuff in a little bit cooler area than I did. I kept them in my garage and my garage in the summer gets extremely hot. 
And I don't know if that degrades this stuff. I don't remember it being this gooey. Like it was always kind of slimy and whatever, but I don't remember it being this. Like it kind of, if I squeeze it, it kind of runs out. I don't feel like that's the way the product's supposed to be. So I don't know if that's my bad. All right, so I am giving these guys back these two. See that action, I'm sure that B action there is from the formic in there, which, you know, is what it is. All right, so I'll put those two back on. Yeah, look at that action. And my smoker's out, of course, so. Do you think they like formic acid? Look at that. Clearly not their, not their choice there of what they want. So the other thing I always do is I always put an upper entrance up here. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to seal it in and see if I can keep those fumes inside there a little bit more. I always, I was always concerned with, with overpowering them with this stuff and killing, killing too many. But at this point, I'm concerned that I absolutely need to seal them in there. The front's wide open, but I need to seal them in there with the formic and let that formic do its job. But at least that's not so far, so tipping so far forward. One good thing. So yes, I am, I'm closing up. I usually stick a, put a stick in the back here so that they get a nice airflow from the front entrance up through the hive and back and it gives them a, another entrance up top. And I just can't do that anymore. I can't, I can't do that. I'm gonna, leave them sealed up like this. I have to keep the front entrance open so that they do actually have ventilation, but I really need to hit these mites hard. Hopefully the Formic Pro, uh, it is not Formic Pro. These are Mite Away Quick Strips. It is Formic Acid treatment. Hopefully that is enough. But, I mean, again, I think I, think I caught them in time so that treatment will be, will be effective. But, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to, yes, I'm just going to go back and treat all these guys. Well, <laughs> I think this is a sign that I haven't been in this bottom box for a while. I'll seal these up. Ouch. <laughs>
All right, we are ch gonna check in here. Again, this is a nest that I haven't been all the way down into in a while. Got brood, some capped brood. I'm trying to see if there's back filled with eggs or, hard to tell on that frame, I can't really see. Brood. Okay, nothing going on there. Okay, I see a few very young larvae in among the... So there's brood, looks like they've been backfilled. Lots of nectar and stuff, but also, uh, I don't see eggs. I saw a very, very young larva, like a couple day old larva. All right, here's a better pattern of brood. Not seeing any mites or uncappings or anything yet like that. Oh, nice frame. Nice frame of brood there on uh, both sides. So I'm not seeing the things like uncapping on this one, but I will, I'm gonna end up treating. I'm gonna end up treating everybody. Definitely not at the threshold we're told to keep, so. All right, we will treat these guys too. Same thing, I'm just gonna seal them up this time. Get them nice and sealed in there. Hopefully those fumes really get kicked around in there, get locked in there. All right, two hives checked and treated. Get in here, see what the super looks like. Oh, doing a good job. Not much going in, going on in the top there. Just fine. I'll just. So this was going to be additional space for that hive. I'm just going to let them deal with what they got going on right now. I don't see a population nearly, you can, I mean, compare these two. So I added formic acid, I added mite away to both of those hives just now. Look at one's reaction, look at the other. I think, I think it just shows you the population of the one on the right there is just so much bigger. This hive also doesn't seem very big. So be interested to see what they have for brood. That is so full of honey. I pulled that one out too fast and too sideways, but yeah, I mean, there's nothing, nothing going on in here. I don't think. It's all resources. It's all resources. God, God. And I'm breaking frames and Jesus. Well, there's no, I mean. 
Wicked frame of honey. Well, if they don't have any brood to take care of, then they make honey, right? I think that that's what I'm running into here. I wonder if I killed the queen with the formic? Could have. Mite levels are gonna be a lot lower, I'm guessing, because they're broodless. Yeah. Crap ton of honey. Jesus. That is something right there. Holy Hannah. Well, I don't know. <sighs> okay, so. They're queenless. Now I gotta see if I can give them a queen, right? No, oh, is it even worth it? I just prepare to combine them. I got a lot of resources. Oh, Nike. Oh, Jesus. These guys got a lot of honey up here. It looks like pretty darn full. Pretty darn full. Capped. Second one in is capped. All right, so this whole super is honey. I did have a queen excluder, it makes sense. We'll take this guy, I think. Because we'll probably end up co trying to combine these hives now. Yes, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, I didn't get, I didn't bring smoke over. Is it even working? There, there's, there's some smoke. Okay, so this guy is chock full honey. So I want that guy. Why do I want them? Because I'm going to try and combine this hive with that hive, I think. And that hive has crap loads of honey. I literally can't see. Oh, there I can see some smoke coming. I truly can't see it here, and then I pull up the video, and it's like, oh, you really kind of went overboard with the smoke. But I can't say. Honestly, depending on we, what we have here, if we don't have brood in here, I could take this one too, because those two deeps are just chock full of honey. Again, that was a, too quick a pull, I know. Just kind of in a hurry again. This is the problem when I have, I only have six hives, but when I have six hives and I need to do everything on all the hives every time I'm out here, I can't piecemeal it, I can't come out. I don't have the time to come out here twice a week and just hit two hives at a time or something like that. I do not have the ability to do that. And so, in my situation, see now that's all brew, that's fine. So brood, taking that one. <sighs> Pack this full. That's brood and honey. Grab this guy in here. This one's got a little comb on it. 
Here comes the problem, you know, another problem solving situation. So I've got a queenless hive over there, two deeps packed full of honey. Brood, you know, have been broodless for a while. There's nothing in there as far as brood. I want to maybe combine them here. I could actually split and put one of the part of the hive here, part of the hive in one of these, depending on how how these guys are doing. So maybe we'll just wait. I mean, I see, I saw brood already in here. So they've got brood. We'll move on. We'll move on here. Chicken mites, man. Chicken mites always gotta ruin everything. There we go. Holy smoke! You guys are packed. Woo! Look at these guys. Doing their thing for sure. Well, because I have a queenless hive, and I've got two deeps with that hive that are packed full, I can potentially move those over here and take this then. I was thinking that maybe I would have to leave this. Also, I don't have a queen excluder on here, so I have to see if I've got brood in here and if it's worth it messing with. All right, well, my battery died there, so I'm not exactly sure what, what I showed you, but I did have this funny, funny thing happen in this one. I had this frame that I bought for, uh, it was allegedly for comb honey. And so I tried it last year, it didn't really work. There you go, there's your, there's your comb honey. All, all drone brood. <laughs> all drone brood in there. So that's cool. You know, that's sweet. Uh, but anyway, this also good. Oh, are there are eggs on this side. I don't know on that side, but there's good brood there. So everything else is good. So we'll put that back. I will throw... Um, yeah, I guess I'm not going to hate on the drones, so we can put the drones... Uh, two, four, six, eight... We appreciate Pack that guy full. All right, I'm running out of time again. Um, I need to, I'm gonna take those colonies and then I'm gonna combine them over here. And so I think I will put one just right here They're queenless. They're not even close to having a queen. There should not be a problem with combining them. There should not, should not, should not. As far as I understand, there should not be a problem. Did I separate this yet? I gotta put the... So I am gonna move those two deeps over here. Along with all their bees, they're gonna just have to get along. This is how it's gonna be. There we go. Formic, come on. Huh. This is the angry hive. This has always been the angry hive. Really? I squished their queen. I asked them to, you know, does it help to smoke yourself? I don't know. I know some people do it. All 
All right, so I'm literally gonna grab one of those deeps. I'm gonna bring it over here. I'm gonna put it on here. I'm gonna put the other deep on here. And that's how it's gonna be. And I wanted to take more honey than I'm gonna be able to. But there's brood in here. There's a mess of honey there too. And let's see what we're dealing with here. Honey and brood, doing good. Brood already on the second one in, so we're good there. Um, I do want to take this off though, so I can put that deep on here, Jesus. There we go. Yeah, they kind of, they did a pretty good job of clearing this one out of this strip. This strip's almost in pieces. They tried, kind of. All right, and like I said, literally, I'm going to take one of these deeps and bring it over here. <clears throat> like, seriously. That's a lot of honey. Okay. This is honey and brood, apparently. That's what I told myself. Two, four, six, eight. There's one more frame that needs to go back in here. Uh, and then, of course, I realize that I didn't treat them. It's heavy. I think I had, did I check? Did I have brood? I have brood in this one? I don't think I checked. Maybe I just checked and I forgot. Did I check? Oh my god! Sweet! Oh, come on now. Just sting me on the calf. This is the hot, this is the hot hive. This is the hive. This right here, this is the hot hive. This is the hive that doesn't like me. This is the hive. They do a great job. They rear brood. They make honey. But they're just kind of a-holes. Okay, everybody, I'm using smoke, just so you know, look at that though, uh, yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah is what we say to that. <sighs> Cap, a brood on this side. No, we got some uncapping and that kind of stuff. No, we just got brood. Looks like good brood rearing. Real nice. So that's sweet. So they're doing great. So. Just back. Hit them with some formic. See how they like that action. I think I got it. I just got it. I just got it. See how they like that action. <clears throat> there we go. There's that. I'm going to take this other deep, drop it on top here like it's hot. I'm going to definitely drop it like it's hot. Oh, good God. All right, there you go. Well, that's what I chose to do. 
Now are these bees gonna be lost? Maybe, but they're gonna come back here somewhere, probably, right? Like I can't imagine they're gonna be lost forever. So I got brood on the bottom, in the bottom box. Give them a whole box full of, basically honey, a whole slew of bees. Whole slew of bees. Look at them bubble up. They don't like that stuff. Well, it's what you get for stinging me. Would have come up with some alternatives if you... Now, nice to have this smoke. Don't you guys think? Nice to have this smoke to see if we can drive those bees down or away or something so I don't crush a bazillion of them. But they're, they're in a catch-22, aren't they? I'm giving them smoke to try and drive them down. That formic acid is underneath them, driving them up. So, they're in a quandary. And I'm guessing who gets caught in the quandary but me. So maybe I should just move on with my life and limit the number of times I get stung. Right? And again, I'm going to seal them up. I know that there's some brood in the top here. I know that there's brood in the bottom here. There's a crap load of honey here. So they're going to have to work it out because that's that's what I'm giving them. That's the situation I'm giving them. They're going to have to work that out. And they will. Check these guys out on top. <laughs> Didn't have enough bees flying. I figured, you know what we should do? Get some more bees to fly. Here we go. Put this on, same thing. I'm going to seal them, seal them in. I'm not going to give them the upper entrance this time. They've got a lot of space in there. Kind of interesting, right? It's, they usually really go down quick with that, but they don't like that formic, so you are fighting them. All right. That. I think we decided this is honey with brood. Right? Is that what I decided or did I not decide anything here yet? Well, there's at least drone drone brood up here. Uh, yeah, tons of larva, tons of larva. Real good. Real good, good. So, um, perfect. Um, but I didn't treat them, so now I gotta sneak this treatment in there somehow. I screwed up. Uh, can I lift them both? Oh, bad idea. Uh, lift with your back. Oh, yeah. Always lift with your back. Oh, yeah. It's the good stuff right there. All righty. Formic. Hit him. Gotta hit them. We gotta cut this sucker open. Don't worry, I'll clean up my mess later. That's what my kids always say. Alrighty. Split them apart. They are gooey. There you go. Live with your back. Oh my god. Snikey.
All right, same thing. Clean off the cover a little bit here. There we go. Not sure what I'm doing with this. Really have no idea. So, I, mean, I can't remember if there's brood in this box or not. Oh yeah, this is this is the amazing drone brood frame. I don't know, should I give them that frickin' box too? I guess probably. Uh. This one must have a bunch of comb on the bottom. It's all stuck. Yeah, there's brood in here. I guess they can have this one too. Ow! Well, I gotta clear this frame off, apparently. Oh, it's not the frame. God darn it. Another frame that came apart. I should be keeping track, but it does have a bunch of junk on it, too. Which is probably why it's stuck in the first place. And then after it's stuck... We have the issue that you just witnessed. Maybe you didn't even witness it. Hopefully you didn't. Ah, shoot. I made a big mistake back here. I took that cover off and the cover was just covered in bees. <clears throat> And I dropped it, so now I would send a whole bunch of bees on the ground. Talk about like a not super great two, four, six, eight, nine. Not super great thing to have happen. Well, if this is just honey, I might stay. Because then you got all these bees down at your feet and they crawl up your legs and then they sting you on the legs or they climb into your shoes and they sting you. Anyway. There, so, I mean, not ideal. Like, I'm clearly, like, crushing bees right now, but I'm not wanting to do that. God damn it. I'm not wanting to do that, but it's the mess I got myself into. Huzzah! Notice how I threw it further away this time. Less likely. to have it bounce back and hit me in the shin. This I was light. Oh, but it's sealed down. Little trick that I learned. If you can't pull it off, maybe you can push it down and break the seal first. I think it helps sometimes. I don't know that it helped just now, but I can claim it did. Not a lot going on on top of this one. Just wonky, kind of wonky comb all over the place. Like all the way through here. It's like connected, but not along. I don't know, they did their own thing here. God, they sealed it down tight though. Holy cow. Like we got some frames maybe together here. Holy cow, all right. Yeah, I'm not sure what we got. It's craziness in there. Um, do not have a clean excluder here. You guys not get smoke. Oh boy. Everything's really stuck down here. Okay, 
lots of honey. Not seeing any brood yet. Uh, I do have brood. I've got some larvae here. I'm trying, guys. I use smoke. Right? Um, so we've got drone, drone brood at least in here. These are some healthy honey frames. Ooh, that's a beautiful. Ooh, that is beautiful. Ooh, that's beautiful. All right, let's see, I gotta pop this off. Formic in between, get her done, move on. Gots to go. Time to go. It is time to go. You tell me, do you think they're calmer? Maybe a little bit? I don't know, they're pretty, ang pretty angry. I'm using smoke. All right, Formic. Hit him. Hit him. There you go. But the party is not over. All right, so <clears throat> I'm sure this kind of induces a robbing situation, which is not what I'm trying to do at all, but I just, uh, I mean, like, Well, that's it. Hopefully those bees find their way actually anywhere. Any colony would be great. Thanks for watching. Steve Wilmus with Father Daughter. Father Daughter Honey.